Luke chapter 18. How many believes the Lord knows what's going on? <laughs> Luke chapter 18. Brother Chris, if that heat's on, we'll just turn it back just a little bit. I'm cooking up here this morning. <laughs> uh, somebody told me one morning after church, I turned the heat off, and they said, now listen, we don't care if you take that coat off. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't make you cold. If it gets too cold, the heat will come on. But in Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 9, he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. God help us. There's only one righteous. There's only one that's righteous. The Lord presented this parable as a tool to bring conviction in the hearts of those who trusted in themselves. In their own righteousness, in their own abilities, in their own works, their own knowledge, their own wisdom. You see, the Lord saw a people. There were certain people. He saw a need in their life that they needed to hear something that hopefully the Spirit of God would move upon them and bring conviction in their lives about the condition of their heart. I want to remind you, you don't have to turn there, but We'll get back here in Luke, but in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus made a statement. He was talking about him being divine, remember? Mm -hmm. If there's something that sticks out in that portion of the Bible there and that, that Jesus was talking about, always remember this. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. <laughs> Without me, ye can do nothing. Jesus saw a group of people one day who were trying to be righteous without him. Without the Spirit of God, without faith in God alone, in their own abilities, in their own lives, they were trying to be righteous, dignified. They were conceited. They were proud, they were arrogant, they were boastful, they were self-centered and self-righteous. God help them, right? The prophet Isaiah said, All of our righteousness are as, what, filthy rags. Meaning your very best <laughs> is no more than filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God and the Spirit of God moving and directing your life. Everything else, your very best that you can put together is worth no more than filthy rags. Jesus was speaking to certain people who trusted in themselves. This admiration of themselves caused them to despise others. Now, you see, if I get to feeling good enough about myself, I don't have to concentrate on you and all of your faults and shortcomings 
If I get to feeling good enough about myself, I'm going to automatically look down at you. Jesus saw a group of people one day who needed to hear some words from him in hopes it would convict their heart about the state of mind that their heart was in. This admiration caused them to despise others, to look down or categorize themselves better than others. That's sad, isn't it? Have you ever been somewhere? I mentioned, I mentioned something similar to this a week or so ago. Have you ever been somewhere to a church function and all of a sudden you find out there are seating arrangements? <laughs> huh? Have you ever went to sit down somewhere and somebody said, wait, whoa, wait, wait, that seat's for somebody else. You going to pray for me? Listen. When we get to feeling too good about ourselves, we'll feel others are on another level. The Lord saw a group of people one day who needed to hear some instruction from Him concerning this condition. They felt as righteous and as holy as they needed to be and certainly more than others. Hmm? They had arrived in their own eyes. Right? But the Lord felt differently. You see, they felt, they were, they, they had it all together. But the Lord felt they needed to hear a parable. You know, the Lord still speaks to the hearts of men and women today if we will listen through His Word, through His Spirit, through His voice. You ever heard the Lord speak to you, try to get your attention? Hmm? Although this is called a parable, it is a real description of the differences of the self-value of individuals and their standing before God. What do you mean? How I feel about myself can affect how I stand before God. The parable that the Lord was going to share with him, them now is a real to life example of the differences that this can make in your life. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. You excuse me and pray for me just a minute. I'm going to get into this. But I'm going to have to get out of something first. <laughs> In verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. I want us to understand that these two men represent all of mankind from different walks of life. <laughs> to start with, they were at the same place at the same time doing the same thing. Right? Both of them went up to the temple to do the same thing, to pray. But I want us to understand that since the beginning of time, among those who worship God, there has always been a mixture of good and bad. Now, we can't always recognize the difference. But the Lord can. You see, he saw a group of people at the temple that needed to hear some words from the Lord concerning the condition of their heart. 
has always been since the beginning of time those whose worship is accepted and those whose worship is not accepted. Remember Cain and Abel? They both offered sacrifices before the Lord, right? But verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Now, they both went up to pray. But the Bible says the Pharisee prayed with himself. <laughs> right? Isn't it funny how little things that the Lord will pull out and show you? Just because you show up to church, just because you've got a testimony, just because you pray louder than everybody else in the building, don't mean God's on the other end. He prayed with himself. Not with God. You ever had a conversation on the cell phone with somebody? They were on the other end. You're, you're talking and they're talking and all of a sudden you realize they, they can't hear you. They've, somewhere there's a, a, a bad connection or a lost signal or something. You still got signal. They're talking. You can hear them. Blah, 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 blah. And you say something. They just keep talking. You say, hello, hey, hey, hey. And they just keep talking. You ever had that? I, every one of us has that. And you say, you say, well, they might as well hang up. They can't hear nothing I'm saying. You see, the Pharisee prayed with himself. <laughs> Isn't it a shame for us to make such an effort to come to the house of God? And such a show to stand up and to pray for the whole time God's not on the other end. <laughs> you believe that still happens? <laughs> oh, mercy. He was confident. He was proud. He was loud. But he prayed with himself. I want us to understand something. We have grandchildren that live in another state and we FaceTime them just about every day. One's five and one's one. <laughs> Ava's the little one. She knows when her mom is trying to FaceTime us or we're trying to FaceTime them because that cell phone makes a different sound. Right? When she hears that sound... She'll run to where her mama is and she'll start saying, Papa, pa, before we answer the phone. And when we answer the phone, she's just, blah, 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 blah. she's just wanting to talk, 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 talk. And I eat it up. But Ella can come or we can say something to Ella and she can get in front of the phone, she can talk with her. And Ava will come and she'll try to get between Ella and the phone. Why? She wants to be seen. She wants to be heard. Right? Well, you see, <laughs> bless her little heart, she's a great illustration of what that old Pharisee was. He wanted to be seen. He wanted to be heard. Right? But you see, the whole time, he was only praying with himself. It is sad for Men and women, Christians who know so much to have that kind of relationship with God that all that they do, they're trusting in themselves, their own righteousness, all of the good within themselves, and God ain't even on the other end. That's sad, isn't it? You see, the Lord saw a group of people, certain ones, who needed to hear this message. Right? The Pharisee called God's name. But had more good to say about himself. Than God. Let's read it again. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God. I thank thee. Now let's listen to what he's thanking God for. 
I thank thee, I'm not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that a prayer? Man, that's a prayer, ain't it? What kind of prayers are we praying to God? Are we so self-sufficient? Are we so confident in who we are and what we are? He didn't even say, God, I just want to start by saying thank you for saving my soul. <laughs> no. He had more to say about himself than all the goodness and riches of God. All that comes from the storehouse and above on his life, he wanted to say something about himself. Beware of those who always talk about themselves. <laughs> a lot of conversations you have with people is a, a one-way a one conversation. You're going to either listen to them and all that they have to say about themselves or the conversation ends. Beware of those kind of people. God help us to realize I am nothing and nobody but by the grace of God. Paul said, I am what I am. <laughs> Paul could have had a wonderful testimony of himself and all that he's done. He said, it's only the grace of God. I am what I am. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Jesus spoke to the scribes and the Pharisees here. He says, ye hypocrites. Now I want us to hear something right here. You see, Jesus didn't have to include that word. He could have just said, ye scribes and Pharisees. That was their appropriate titles. <laughs> but he included another little word, ye hypocrites. I heard something the other day. I can't even remember where I heard it from. But somebody was talking about, well, let me ask you this. Don't, 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 does it surprise you where hypocrites show up at? Where, where do you find hypocrites? In the church, huh? Down below? Everywhere. Oh, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, yeah. <laughs> everywhere, they're everywhere. They're. They show up at the house of God. Right? Hypocrites. But I heard something the other day. Just because you catch a mouse in a cookie jar don't mean he's a cookie. <laughs> right? You find a mouse in a cookie jar, that, does that make him a cookie, Alicia? Even me and you know that, don't we? No. Doesn't mean he's a cookie. Ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, you can rest assured on one thing. Jesus reads between the lines. You see, so many times we just read what's, we just read what's, what, what's the line. What's, the, what's it saying? Jesus reads between the lines. Hmm? But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. The Pharisees' prayer was not accepted. It was only a formality or a habitual prayer. He never said, I remember where you saved me from, Lord. He said, God, I thank you. Well, let me listen. Real thanks, a thankful heart will remind you every time where God brought you from. There, there's hardly ever a time that I go to the throne of grace that I don't remember. God, thank you from where you brought me from. God, I remember when I was lost. I remember when the devil had control. Thank you, God. Don't ever forget where the Lord brought you from. He never praised God, nor recognized it was only the grace and mercy of God that I am what I am. 
He came only to be seen, to be heard, and to make a display of himself and to receive the praise of men. He didn't ask God for nothing. Why? He was in need of nothing. He didn't recognize he needed anything. He already had it all. Right? He was so good, the Bible says he despised others. That's sad, isn't it? Do you believe the enemy of your soul can build your head up to a point that you would be in the same shoes? You best believe it. We can't afford to feel too good about ourselves. He felt he was in need of nothing. Now, Jesus felt that some needed to hear this parable. <laughs> Listen, I want to say something to us. Singers, when you sing to the Lord, when you get up here and you harmonize so beautifully, musicians, when you get up here and you know all the chords, right? when you can hit all of the licks, you better do it from the sincerity of your heart. Because if it don't come from there, Jesus ain't even listening on the other end. All of your abilities. <laughs> we got some beautiful singers, don't we? We got some beautiful, some awesome musicians in the church of God. Teachers, listen. When you stand up here to teach, preachers, when you stand up here to preach... It's not about all that you have obtained between here. We better be able to be an instrument of God. <laughs> you see, when we get to where we think we know more than God knows, well, ain't nobody that says it. Listen, the enemy can blow you up to a point. We have a history in our in, in the history of our church, we have a history of men who has fallen by the wayside. Amen. Wonderful men of God. Some had the vision before it ever came to pass. Had the vision of the fields of the woods. But he fell away from God. You see, I don't care who you are, the devil, he'll take you. He, he's looking for an opportunity to take you out. Singers, musicians, teachers, preachers, whatever it is you do for the Lord, stay low. Stay low. Stay humble. Always stay in a place that you recognize yourself. And we'll get to that in a minute. You need God. It's a sad thing when the devil can get your life so wrapped up to where you don't even know what you need from God. He can get you there. Too much self-confidence is deadly dangerous. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12... Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Listen, every one of us better be taking heed. Every one of us better be praying and seeking God every day. Lord, show me me. God, reveal unto me me. Right? You see, we don't take heed because we're thinking wrong of ourselves. You ever been in a church service and the minister was preaching and the thought crossed your mind? Boy, he's laying it on Brother Nick this morning. I hope he's listening. Wow. Sister Crystal, he got her today. Thank God. 
Have you ever had that thought cross your mind? I have. That's, that's, a, in, that's a thought of the enemy. <laughs> oh, you see, when this word right here goes forth, it's for me. It's for you. It's for every one of us. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. <laughs> oh, God, help us. Peter... The rock. <laughs> the Lord was trying to reveal something to him one night about what was fixing to take place in his life. Peter said, I'll not deny you any, in any wise. In any situation, no matter what the cost, Lord, I will not deny you. He goes on to say, now all others, <laughs> right? You see, Peter put himself in a category all by himself. All the others may, though all of them will, not I. You see, at that very point, Satan had set the hook, <laughs> right? It's not at the point that he began to curse. Yeah. Satan had already set the hook when he says, not I. All others might, but not me, Lord. Too much self-confidence is deadly dangerous to your soul. Peter says, I'm ready to go to prison and even death with you, Lord. Now, in Mark, you don't have to turn there. If you, if you want to, you can. Chapter 14. You see, Mark uses a little word there. I don't believe it's in any other, 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 other Gospels. It may be. But he uses a word describing how Peter spoke to the Lord. Anybody know what it is? Vehemently. <laughs> oh, he was... With force, Lord, listen to what I'm saying unto you. I, I know me. I will not deny you. Now I know some of these others. Most likely they might. All others might, but not me. Hmm. Vehemently, with force. You see, too much self-confidence huh, can be very deadly. Trusting in one's own self, in his own ability. Right. See, it would have been a whole different story if Peter would have said, Lord, by the grace of God, if you'll help me, right. I'll not deny you. Right. See, that's a whole different scenario, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Self-confidence will lead to self-righteousness. When you're too confident in your own self, in your own abilities, it will lead to self-righteousness in your life. You praying for me? In Proverbs 20 and 6, turn there with me. I want you to read this. Proverbs 20 and 6. It says, most men. Now, when I was, was studying this, the Lord said, stop right there. Most men. What does this mean? When you use the word most, that means the majority. Right? On a, on a percentage, it means at least 51% to be most. Most men will proclaim, now, not just Possibly will proclaim or most men, you know, if if all falls, if all the cards line up right, they they could. Pro most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. God help us. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Now, if you want to hear a lot of good things about Clint Poole, you meet me after church, I can tell you a bunch of them. I know more than anybody else. Right? 
If you want to hear some good things about Sister Hilda, you'll have to talk to her. Most men, God help us, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. <laughs> I'm a pretty good fellow. If you don't believe me, ask me, I'll tell you so. God help us. But a faithful man, who can find? <laughs> but a faithful man, one who is humble and lowly and doing all that he can and trusting in God more than himself, faithful in every situation, who can find him? Jesus felt there were some who needed to hear this parable. <laughs> In hopes of conviction in their heart. I believe the Lord would still speak to us today. I believe he, I believe he sees some need around here and there. That there are certain ones who still need to hear this. Romans 10 verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. <laughs> now, here's the apostle speaking about the whole nation of God, God's people, God's covenant people, Israel. Paul said, my prayer for them is that they might be saved. <laughs> You see, he saw a whole nation of people that was trusting in themselves, that was trusting in the law, that was trusting in everything but God. For I bear them record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Hmm. For they be ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see, trusting in your own selves, your own abilities will bring about self-righteousness. That happened to the whole nation of Israel. Hmm. Paul saw this problem with the whole nation. Solomon done said hundreds of years ago, it's going to happen to most men. I don't, how about you and me? I don't want it to happen to me. How about you? I, I, I don't want that spirit to take over me that I think I'm better and am in need of nothing from God Almighty. Be careful not to point a finger at others to say we would not do the same. Jesus spoke a woe to the scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites who said, listen to what this group said. If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. This is what a bunch of hypocrites said. <laughs> if, if we had been back there with them, we would not have taken part. Right? But listen to what Jesus said unto them. You see, they were thinking too good of themselves. Oh, they, 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 they had the law down. <laughs> Uh, they, they, they wore little scriptures right up here everywhere. So, you know, they, they could quote it at any time. They could stop anywhere. Everybody who see them, saw them knew who they were. But they were trusting in themselves. And they even pointed a finger at their fathers and said, if we had lived in that day, if we had been, we would not have taken part in that. Listen to what Jesus says. You're the ones who will fill up the measure of your fathers. <laughs> What's he mean right there, Brother Dan? You're the ones that's going to crucify the Son of God. <laughs> Why? Because of your own righteousness, of trusting in yourselves, in your own abilities. 
That's over there in Matthew 23 if you want to look at it. Religious pride can cause us trouble with God. Religious pride. How many of you were born a member of the church of God? Raise your hand. Not a single one of you. Your daddy worked for A.J. Thomason. That's pretty good roots, ain't it? (laughs) But you know what you had to do, sister? You had to take a covenant with God yourself. You're not born into the kingdom of God. You're born again into the kingdom of God. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. What do we have to boast of? (laughs) It's only by the grace and mercies of God that allowed us somewhere, someday, to fall on our knees and say, Lord, save me, I'm lost. Don't care who your daddy was, (laughs) who your mama was. Right? My granddaddy was a preacher. (laughs) My great granddaddy. So? Jesus was having a conversation with a bunch of Jews one day. He was trying to direct them to the truth that would make them free. They said, Abraham is our father. Right? We are Abraham's seed. (laughs) But Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Jesus knew some needed to hear the message to reveal unto them how they stood with God. God help us. There was a whole church In Laodicea. Right? The church, the whole church is known as the lukewarm, self-satisfied church. Listen to what they said of themselves. They were rich. They were increased with goods. They have need of nothing. Now listen. Some of us have been around this thing we're born <laughs> with our families carrying us to church, standing on the church pew, cutting our teeth on the, on the back of the pew. Right. Right? right? 30, 40, 50, 60, some 80 years ago. <laughs> right. Listen, you're still in need of God. Amen. Even yet, still to this day, you are still in need of God. Don't put too much confidence in yourself. They felt that they were rich, increased with goods, and had need of nothing. But Jesus said, Know ye not? No. <laughs> I want to stop right there. Know ye not? You see, I mentioned a while ago the devil can get you to a place that you, you know, it's one thing to know you need God and decide, you know, I'm. But the devil can get you to a place to where you don't even know what you need. That's dangerous, isn't it? He can cause you to think more highly of yourself than you ought. He can cause you to trust in your own abilities. Jesus said, no, you're not. You're wretched. You're miserable. You're poor. You're blind. And you're naked. And here they were feeling good about themselves. Whole church. God help us. Don't put too much confidence in your own self and your own abilities. It'll take you down the wrong road. In closing, 2 Corinthians 3 and 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency, say it with me, is of God. 
Don't ever forget that. The Lord blesses you, uses you. Stay low. Stay humble. When the Lord endues you with knowledge and wisdom and power, and stay low. God help us never to get to a point to where we set ourselves way up here and we look down on everybody else. Everybody. That's dangerous. If you'll stand with me this morning, I thank the Lord for the Word of God. Thank you for...